celebration for us to come together. A lot of beautiful faces in the crowd this morning. And uh, we're just so blessed to have you here with us, joining with us. Now, I want to tell you in advance, if you go to sitting on any of these pews and it creaks or pops or moves or looks like it may just be a little unstable, I will apologize to you in, in, in advance. It's a little embarrassing to me that some of these pews are falling apart. And uh, But I tell you what, if it, if it gets too bad, I promise you, if you donate the money, we'll put it to the right use and we'll get some new seats. So, uh, so we'll, we'll make sure that happens. But we just want you to feel welcome. And at home this morning, we're hoping that during this service, you won't have to spend all of the whole time sitting down anyway. You might want to just get right into the service and put you all into the service of worship this morning. That's what we've come for. I was on the way to church this morning and two things that came to my mind. I was thinking to myself about today and everything that's going on today. And uh, two, two emphasis that I want to emphasize on this morning. Number one, uh, we're going to have some singing, uh, probably quite a bit of music today. But I don't, I don't want anybody to come this morning thinking that we're just doing a concert. That's not what we're doing. I want you to understand this is a worship service. This is an opportunity for us to give glory and honor to the King. There's going to be plenty of talent here today. But the purpose today is not to, uh, to look to talent, but to look to God. And that's why we come today, is lift Him up. And I want you to remember that today. And the second thing I want to emphasize today is just to be sensitive to the movement in the Spirit of God. Uh, we're not at home sitting there watching TV or something on TV. And this is an actual live service in action. So, so you can actually get into the service. If the Spirit of the Lord gets to move and you can get up and shout a little, jerk a little. You just obey God this morning. That's what I want you to do throughout this service. And I will apologize to you. We've been a little bit late this morning getting started. I've been trying to give everybody the great opportunity to get in here so we can make sure everybody's able to do their part, do what they do. So uh, we do apologize to you for that, but I'm sure that you'll understand. And once we get cranked up and going here this morning, it'll be worth it. I believe that. But the, one of the greatest things I believe we can do today as we get started is to make sure we start this service outright. Anybody know the best way to start any service? Prayer. It's through prayer. And I know that prayer is, is awful for, forsaken in the generation that we're in by too many people. And it's a last resort for just about everything. But I believe, I really honestly believe and convince that we can see God move mightily through prayer this morning. And I'd like for you as we get ready to pray this morning, I want you to pray that God will just unify our worship this morning. That He'll just minister mightily. And that He'll bless this service in a great way. Because I really want to see God move in this service. I really do. A lot of the folks here at Gray Street have been anticipating this day as it approached. And... Uh, I'll probably maybe mention this even more so uh, throughout the remainder of the service, but I wasn't even aware of some of the things that I discovered. One of them was, uh, for the longest time, I was thinking that one of the things I was told, which was that the, the uh, church was established somewhere in 1972 or 73, and I've just kind of gone along with what I was told, you know, but uh, somebody mentioned there on Facebook that there's a possibility the church was even older than that. So I called the state office over the last couple of days to try and get some clarification. And I was able to discover that this church, I don't know, it could have been in a tent for a little while, but as far as this church actually being an established church on the books, February the 2nd, 1965. And that makes this one of the most uh, special homecomings of all. And you're here for that. And you know what that means. This is 50 years, half a century, 50 years of ministry. blessed thing for us to recognize and I want you to know this morning that my heart just does somersaults thinking about the fact that God has allowed me to be a part of this big plan and I'm humbled at the idea that God would allow me to be here at such a time as this because as I've mentioned in the past I look around this church and I see the many things you know I didn't I, I have done a lot of work since I've been here, a lot of remodel and things of that nature, but I didn't put this church here. I didn't establish it. And you know, every homecoming I'm reminded of all the spaghetti dinners and homecomings and uh, whatnot beforehand and the many efforts and work days and so many other things that went on long before I ever got here to pastor to make sure that this church was here. 
The idea that I follow behind a lot of great men of God like Brother Sanger and many others who helped make sure that there was a church here in, in Apopka that we could lift up the Lord. And I am so honored, so thankful for the many sacrifices, the service that's been given uh, so that I could be here to pastor and that we could continue to reach the lost right here. I mean, think of it. You know, yesterday, I want to share this with you. We're going to pray. I was out here working yesterday. I'm here basically up until uh, around 9, 30, 10 o'clock last night working, working, working. And, and all these hedges that are out here on the sides and around the other side of the church when I came here, a lot of that stuff needed to be uh, spruced up because it was in real bad shape and hadn't been done anything with many years. And so we, I got down my hands and knees and planted all those hedges out there. And me and Brother Richardson and Brother Benefield planted these trees. Now I teased them of these trees out here in the front because I told them, I said, now the one that's really growing the biggest is the one that I planted. See? Uh, yeah, it's the one right here in the, on the end. And Brother Benefield, I got the pictures to prove it, planted the one in the middle. And Brother Richardson planted the one on the other end. So I don't know. But uh, but anyway, it all jokes aside, though, you know, I got I got working around yesterday and I was trimming those hedges and the scripture came to my mind about how the Bible said one man plants and one man waters and God gives the increase. And I got to thinking about how the, these plants were just so small when we planted them and now look at them, they're bigger, they're flourishing, they're, they're doing their thing. And I thought, you know, there's, there's different people that's going to be here in the service come tomorrow morning. And there's going to be people that God has touched their life. Maybe people like Brother Sanger or others that ministered to you in a great way years gone by. And you're, the, you're a part of that planting. You're a part of what somebody else sowed into you so many years ago. And look at you. You're flourishing this morning. And uh, we might even need to trim you up a little bit today. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But... I'm just thankful for all of that, knowing that God has done and so on so many great things in our life and in services like today that we can celebrate and be thankful and give thanks to all the many things that God has done. So another, just extending our hearts welcome to you. All the Gray Street Home folks, give everybody a hand this morning. Let them know you're so thankful to see them. I also want you to give this group a hand in Jesus' name. A hand. I kept calling him the Hogel family because I know that's his last name, so that's the easiest thing to say. But he said, no, we're actually a, a mixture of a lot of things here, so a lot of, a lot of families. But we're thankful to have them this morning, just blessed to see them. And uh, But we're going to pray, and I want you to stand to your feet this morning, and I want you for the sincerity of your heart to take this moment. There's no other moment during this service of sincerity. I want this to be it right here. And I want you to pray from your heart that lives will be touched, souls will be changed. As a pastor, I realize that every service that I come into, I never know what person might be lost. There might be somebody on the verge of suicide. It might be someone that says, you know, pastor, I'm just ready to throw up my hands and just quit. There might be someone going through marriage trouble this morning, someone having real bad financial problems. I believe in a service like this, God can give you a reassurance and a confirmation that He's still God. He's still able to minister to you. He still loves you. He still cares about you. And He knows right where you're at. So as we get ready to pray, I want you to help me to pray that whoever's in need this morning, that God will minister to those needs and will feel His presence in a powerful way. Would you lift your hearts and your hands before the Lord? And let's go to Him in prayer. Father, this morning we love You. We thank You for this great occasion. 50 years of ministry right here. We worship you and thank you, God, for all the great blessings you bestowed upon this church. We're asking you right now, God, that you'll reach out to those that are in need, God, those in this service that came into this place greatly needing a breakthrough, a blessing from the hand of God. We're asking you this morning that you'll speak to those that are going through troubles. And I pray in God that every soul will leave here changed by the wonder work and power of Almighty God. We'll give you glory and honor for all the great things that are accomplished through the precious name of the Son of God, Jesus. And everyone can say amen. 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 I want you to take a moment and while you're on your feet, we're going to get ready and get started here, but I want you to uh, shake at least five people's hand and welcome them to the house of God this morning. Let them know you appreciate them. Thank you. 
freaking out. <laughs> our feet, everyone that wants to join us in the choir. How many likes old choir songs? Amen. Come on, join us up here, everybody that will. Bump somebody beside you and tell them, go on up to the choir. Amen. Let's put some folks up here and worship the Lord this morning.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout glory. Glory. Amen. I feel like having church. Amen. Don't you? Might as well just take off the bricks and let's have church. Saved and I gave my life to the Lord. There's a lot of things that I laid down and I gave my life completely to Him. Today, a lot of folks that talk about salvation, but there's no real clean break from the person they used to be. There's not much change. But I believe whenever a man gets saved, that old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. 
And a lot of folks may think, well, I don't want to give up my life of sin and I don't want to turn my back on the old me. But you know what you're treating? The old, what you had before, for what you're treating now. I tell you what, it's not much of a deal on, our, uh, on, on the other end, but I tell you what, it's a great deal for us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. But I, I'm thankful that I've traded everything in my past for something greater in the future. And I'm looking forward to heaven. Every day I live and the older I get, I realize all the complications and miseries of this life. And I don't know about you, but I've had many a days I say, well, I just, I'd be okay if the Lord just came and got me now. Anybody ever, you ever feel that way? Amen. Let's worship the Lord this morning. We're going to sing trading this old cross for a crown.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, Come on, raise your hands and give it praise this morning. Lord, Take the time to worship the Lord. Lord, I praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, the hand of fear gripped the crowd that day at Jericho. When the doctor sat and said, your daughter's gone. You can feel the parents' heartbreak. You can hear them cry and moan. For the little girl was only 12 years old. Somewhere in the distance, I climbed against the sun. And a man on the distance from the throne. They said somebody's coming, but what they didn't know. What the promise coming down that dusty road. What the promise coming down that dusty road. From his holy hand, he went first to flow. He holds the key to what I need. Did that tell you where to be? Did the promise coming down that road to be? Well, the line turned to laughter as she began to speak. Said the little girl was not dead. over the years. Many years ago he was here as a clerk with my aunt. If you ever see my aunt to me she looks a lot like my grandmother who recently not too long ago passed away. Very special woman of God. I love her very much. Very dearly. And uh, so my uncle David's coming around. Give him a hand this morning. Right across the street here on this corner. And 
and it had a 20 by 20 concrete or block garage. And my mom and daddy had five of us youngins. And he went in there and took it and blocked up part of it this way and blocked some that way and put a door in. And we had one of the biggest glass windows you ever saw over there. Yeah. Where it wouldn't been where the car drove back and forth. But mom and daddy took care of us in that little 20 by 20. <coughs> I'll tell you how they had it set up. They had sheets, had clothes wire hanging halfway across 10 foot in, and another one halfway to the back. And the front part was the living room and the kitchen. The back part would be in the girls, me and part of the girls slept there, and mommy and daddy and the others slept over on the other side. And so we've been around this area for a long time. And he was able to get property on the next street over and build a house down there. We lived in a house down there for quite a while and then he built the house on the opposite corner over here and we were there. Uh, I lived in that house till 1965 when me and got married. And then we moved back there in 1972 and stayed there until 1980 when we were able to buy our own home over here off of Bates Road. But like I said, we've been here for a while and uh, I started coming here in 1977. My wife had been coming here for quite some time. And I wasn't serving the Lord, living totally out of His will. But she kept praying. <coughs> she had these people praying around here. At one time, she had just about had all she could take. And Sister Phyllis and Brother Bill Rager kind of took her under their wing and said, come on, we're going to be with you, we're going to help you, we're going to make it work. So they prayed for me, Don Brewer put me on his prayer list, and I think, as far as I know, pretty much everybody that Don Brewer had on his prayer list to save the day for the He was a prayer warrior. Sister Ann Sanger, one of the greatest prayer warriors. <coughs> but, uh, to me, like I say, it's, it's so special to be back here and to be a part of this. Uh, and John 1, uh, 14 and 2 said, In my Father's house are many mansions or many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you. What a homecoming we got. I pray a homecoming we got to look forward to. Amen. Luke 15 said, talks about a boy that was glad to go. He that went out. Wasted his daddy's monies, party, did all the things that he wanted to do. It wasn't right. So the Bible says he came to himself. Yeah, yeah. While he was down and beaten with the pigs. And Brother J.P. O'Hara used to say, Sin will take you farther than you want to go. Cost you more than you want to pay. And keep you longer than you want to stay. God is a Mark 5, Jesus told the demoniac, go home. Go to your family. Tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. Joel 2.13 says, turn into the Lord your God. Zechariah 1.3 says, the Lord said, turn into me and I will turn into you. All in the Bible, he just invited us, come, come on, come, come with me, come be with me. Lamentation says, let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Isaiah 55, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let them return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and our God will abundantly pardon. Amen. Amen. That's right. Second Chronicles says, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. You know, there's been a lot of people coming through this church over the years. Uh, you know, I don't know all the ministers before Brother Singer. I know Brother Colsey was pastor here for a period of time. I know that Bill and Catherine Mahaffey was here for a period of time before they went out to evangelize.
my support time. And Brother Bill Mahaffey was preaching in the old sanctuary, the little one, before we built all the other stuff onto it. But in 1977, April, the Lord saved me. I started trying to be right and do right. And out drove me in. And the kid's crazy because I... As soon as I got a taste of it, Brian, I wanted all I could get hold of. I was looking for every revival service they were having. She was, she was following me, and kids was following me to church almost every night. But he ministered over in Longwood just a, a, just a few weeks after I got saved. In fact, like I said, it was Pentecost Sunday, 1977. He was preaching in that sanctuary. God baptized me in the Holy Spirit. God is so good, so good. The brother and sister Mahaffey, like I said, they were pastors here for a period of time. Brother Sanger came in, him and Sister Ann, and they were here for 20 plus years. I'm not sure exactly how long it was, but they were so good, so good. Uh, I lost my dad in 73. Like I said, I got saved in 77. So Don Brewer and Charles Sanger became my spiritual daddies. Well, I looked to them so much, and I went to them so many times to help me do this, help me understand this. Brother Brewer, he didn't get aggravated with me, but he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Brother Hurd. He said, I'm going to get you started in the Bible Institute, and you can learn. That way, he said, I'm going to help you pay some of it, and then I'm going to say that where you can pay some more. And he did. I went to Bible College, International Bible Seminary. Back then, it was down in South Orlando, and then it moved to over here off Edgewater Drive, and now it's in Zellwood. But anyway, I <clears throat> went to school two, two nights a week after my job, and was there. I, I forget how long the course was, six months, whatever. But anyway, I received my minister's ordination and my teacher's ordination. I went back two years later and took an advanced course and tried to learn more and, and you know, try to get as much knowledge as I could. But in saying that, I have to say that I have to ask God a lot of times to forgive me. Because He opened all those avenues and gave me a lot of wisdom in those areas but I don't think that I am used as God would be used enough. I'm in a little church over in Claremont. I teach Sunday school once a month with some others. I try to help do some clerk work over there or whatever. But folks, God is just so good. Yes, we cannot do enough. And I've asked him to help me to spend more time in this word because we need to keep it in our hearts. I know a lot of you realize that as far as I can see, the Bible talks about the last days. We are jumping in as we speak. And if we don't have this word buried in our hearts and in our minds, not only could we fail, but how are we going to encourage our loved ones, family, friends, neighbors, fellow workers? We need to study the Word. We need to keep studying the Word. And just keep asking God to help us to be and do what He wants us to do. That's getting a little far on out from work. I'm supposed to be going with all this. But, uh, I just, I'm going to run down through a, a list of people that were here. And they've gone to be with the Lord. And now, chances are I'm going to miss them. I do, God, have mercy. For Charles and Ann Sanger, Bill and Catherine Mahaffey, Ralph and Sister Harshman, and you that have been here for years, you know what I'm talking about. Frank and Ina Ricks, Ed and Kitty Green, Granny Allie Lee, Sister Hazel, Ronnie Christian, Robin Christian, Ernest and Pauline Bishop, Marlene Hurd, Tracy Hurd, Keith Whitley, Sherry Maynard Whitley, Bill and Joyce Wingard, 
Clint Jackson, Joyce and Gordon Watson, Clifford Carter, Jimmy Brewer, <coughs> Bill and Renee Rager, Jack Hensley, Brother and Sister Sadie Testa, Sister Evans, JP and Jane O'Hara. There's just a number of people that have come through here. And like he was saying, so many of those contributed. They are pioneers of this establishment. They helped to build. <coughs> Brother Sanger used to say there was a, a, a HRS construction. That was partially breaks the same. They worked out here so many times, so many things to do things and try to do things. But these have all gone on to their reward, and there will be others. <coughs> But I'm just, like I said, I'm just almost beyond words this morning with the, the accomplishments of Grace Street Church of God. Pastor Joey told you that he said, I'm his uncle. But supposedly I'm his great, his grandma and my wife and sisters. He may not say that. I'm just like I said, I'm so glad to be here. I kept looking for my youngest sister. Her and her husband are supposed to be here this morning. Hopefully they're on their way. But I was telling Pastor Joey this morning, or yesterday when I was talking to him, that this is emotional to me to the extent that back in the middle 90s, I guess, we had family reunion every Sunday morning. My mama and my four sisters and their families, and Annie and I and our family, we were all here in the sanctuary Sunday morning. When service was over, we would go to one of these big out places or whatever and have lunch and all together. And you know how great that is? But I was looking at it and I'm hoping that I had the tears over. But to have all of us in to this church again like this is just such a, such a blessing. But it ain't nothing like a home. We got a home. Glory to God. In Luke 15, 6, it says, And when he came home, he called his friends to rejoice that he had found his lost sheep. I was once a lost sheep in my past, and now I have been found. And I'm going to ask you this morning to think very seriously. Have you been found? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. lost. People of the Spirit of God is in this place this morning. Yes. So mightily. And he wants to do the work. He wants to do the work. He wants his children to call on him. He said, if you seek me, you'll find me. I'm going to ask you to just stand for a second. <laughs> but if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior this morning, wouldn't this be a beautiful thing to come and ask Him into your heart and into your life? God loves you. We love you. And we would love for you to just take the opportunity this morning. Jesus to come into your heart, to come into your life. Is it going to be a bed of roses? No. But he's able to help us, to keep us, to sustain us in all the situations. He's all loving, all caring. If there's somebody here this morning that you'd like to say, you know what? The 50th homecoming of Grace Street Church of God gave my life to Jesus Christ. <coughs> if there's somebody here this morning who would just come forward, we would love to pray with you, for you. God wants each one of us to be ready to go home. And again, I'm 
I'm saying that in the last days, it says you're going to see turmoil, and I, on Facebook, I can see people going, oh, how bad it is, oh, how terrible it is. Oh, we're not going to make it. We're going to make it. Folks, it don't make no difference who's president. It don't make a difference who's king, or what culture, who's right. leader, or what culture. God is still in control. And as long as you can keep your faith in Him and believe, He's going to help us. He's going to make He's going to see us through. You know what? If He has to, He'll fire them ovens up again. We, we can start getting men up in the morning if need be. Nothing's impossible when I tell you, but we need to have faith in Him. Is there anyone this morning? Joey Myers, come on up. It'd be all right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm just so thankful to be here again this morning. I want to tell you that I'm thankful for the, uh, the I keep wanting to say whole family. <laughs> In Jesus' name, I'm so thankful for this group uh, being here. I was talking with Brother Hodel just here a while back, and uh, I was letting him know that he had mentioned to me about um, helping the church in any way, and and I let him know some of the financial hurdles that we've been through in the last year or two has been pretty great, pretty intense. 
And because of that, we just haven't been able to really do much this year. Uh, we were even considering the possibility of just not celebrating homecoming this year so we didn't have that financial expense because you want to make sure you're paying your bills. I don't want to do homecoming and can't pay the bills. That wouldn't be wise. But uh, I was explaining that to him, and he said, well, brother, you know, we'd be willing to help in any way we can, and uh, we won't charge anything or anything like that. And I explained to him, I used to evangelize myself, and I just have a hard time having anybody come and not do something, you know, to help. And he said, but we, we're okay. We'll do whatever we can do to be a blessing and help. And so uh, I said, well, you know, I, 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 I think that might, we might be able to work that out. I think we, if we can do that, that will probably work out somehow. And while we were on the phone, I got to thinking a little bit about it. And I said, you know, we haven't had a homecoming this year. This is before I realized that this was a 50-year anniversary. I'd have felt bad if we missed that. I really would. But uh, I told him, I said, well, you know what? We can go ahead and do our 50-year anniversary while we're already at this. And I, not 50, I didn't know it at the time. I said, we can go ahead and do our homecoming at this time. And uh, we'll just do it all at the same, in the same time frame. And so that's how we kind of got going in this direction. And I reached out to my Aunt Ann and my Uncle David. And, and uh, I'm going to start calling up Uncle David. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but I reached out to them and uh, let them know that I, we were going to be doing this. And they were so kind and, and gracious to uh, to be willing to help me and reach out to the folks that they knew that used to go to church here. I want this to be a very special day for everyone, for past and former uh, members and parts of this church, to let you know how special you are. As he began to read down that list of names, I thought to myself, you know, those are people that have already gone on. And should the Lord, Lord Terry is coming any longer, we'll probably be next on that list. It won't be long. And I thought about the fact that he said that the singer was here all the years he was here. And I thought, what a legacy. I hope that I can do the same thing to be as faithful and to leave such an impression on so many people. I can only hope that I can do the same. What a great honor. What a great thought. But uh, we're so thankful for that. We're going to give you an opportunity. Uh, if you did not get a chance and you're here and you sing, please, we want you to, to participate this morning by singing. Is there somebody that came in late? If you didn't get your name on the list, that you sing? Uh, anybody, if, if you know somebody sing, call them out. Don't let them sit there and be bashful. You know what I mean? Uh, we're going to have a couple people singing here before that we, we let them go and have a few songs from them as well uh, this morning. Uh, brother, what is your name? Pastor Wingard. Pastor Wingard. Well, you guys sing, don't you? Okay, well, y'all come on and get ready to sing. Come on. Praise the Lord. While they're coming on the scene, While they're getting ready to sing, y'all can fire me later. I'm probably going to get stoned later. Uh, while they're coming on getting ready to sing this morning, anybody else that didn't get your name on the list that sings or would like to sing this morning? While, while, we're, uh, while we're giving them some time to get adjusted and get in here and sing, when they get done, uh, I'm going to have, I don't have, anybody got the list here? You can give it to me, Sister Norman. You got to go ahead and bring that list. While they're doing that this morning, I got a privilege to talk to a few folks that were here in, before, and uh, I got a chance to meet the Tallies. And uh, Sister Tally, you or your husband like to stand and just give a word of testimony of some of your reminiscing. You shared some things with me this morning. Well, I could. I never missed an opportunity. Go ahead. Uh, we love the Lord. We love Grace Street. We were here almost 10 years. We came down. We didn't have any family. And this is one of the most friendly churches at the time we walked in from the back door. The pastors ain't been anywhere here. But we walked, we had looked for a church. We come from the Church of God there. Ken's dad was a minister. Our family was a ministry. So we were looking for God. And so when we came in that back door, we looked at several churches. And so, like I said, we walked in that back door and we sat down and we stayed in the service and God's presence was here just like it is today. It's not any different. God is still the same today yes. as it was a year ago. Yes. So when we came in, we both sat there and looked at each other and they said, we have found our home. And so you all, they offered us the opportunity to work in the church and we had a wonderful youth group. 
And God has been good to us through Grace Street and the love of people. And I, we love, we don't know all of you now, but we feel the love, the same love of God that we felt that day God sent us in this house. And I thank God for that. And Brother Joey, or Joe, <laughs> we'll now know you as Brother Joey when we call you. Um, I thank God for you and your family. Carry on. We love and we'll pray. Birmingham, but it's not the same as having the Grace Creek family. So oh, we love every one of you. Amen. All right. Sister, <laughs> have I got that right? What is it? Sanchez. Sanchez. I'm really in trouble. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good morning. I'm just a friend of the Wingard Sanchez. Um, being raised in a generation church of God, Pastor. Um, I am honored to be here in this house this morning. What a beautiful privilege it is. And you know, I've come through life learning that we get nowhere but by the blood. Amen. He has kept me and will continue to do so. Amen. Bless you. The love that you
neighbors thankful for the blood? Praise the Lord for the blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. <laughs> Glory to God. We're going to have Sister Jackson get ready and come on now. Come on, Sister Jackson. <laughs> Sister Jackson is a great street lifetimer. Praise the Lord. And we're so blessed to have her with us pretty much every Sunday morning, play it, doing her best. And uh, we're just so thankful for her this morning and all that she has contributed and given to the church here at Gray Street and many years of service. I always try to remind her how great and how great of a part she is of what the Lord's doing here. Amen. Somebody this morning while she's getting ready to uh, to sing for us, anybody this morning has got a testimony on your heart and you're thankful to be here, something on your mind. And don't be bashful. I'll never be bashful. Come on. <laughs> Bring it on. And Lord, it, it's amazing. It's so wonderful to be in a place that's actually younger than me. Yeah. <laughs> and and for, the, for the time that I've spent in this church and knowing all these wonderful people and me having the opportunity to pray with everyone, pray for others, and have them pray for me, what a blessing that is. Yes. It says um, a lot about this church and what it was built on. Yeah. And, and I know that the Lord is here. I know I suffered from the minute that I walked in this church way back when with my husband. He had been here as a child. He knew this church. He said, we're going to go. And Joey. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Joey. Yeah. And Joey's there. And Sister Meyer. Go. Yeah. We decided to become members of this church. What a blessing that was Amen. to be part of a family. Amen. A family. Church family. This is my yes. family. I have I have very little family blood. But this is my family. This is where my spirit is. This is where I get my strength from. This is who prays for me. This is who I pray for. What a blessing. Amen. What a lovely testimony. Amen. Sister Tracy and Sister Miranda is going to sing after that. She and Sister jo Joyce Jackson gets done singing. And Sister Reba is going to sing as well. Amen. Sister Jackson, Sister Reba is supposed to sing with you. You ready? I'm not going to sing that many. Come on, Sister Reba, are you holding out on her? <laughs> Come on around and get ready. Give them a hand this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. to be here this morning. It's so good to see all you people I haven't seen for so many years. It's just done something to my heart. And I'm so thankful to see every one of you. And of course, all of you that are here all the time. I love you all and I thank God for every one of you. And I don't sing much anymore. And I'm getting too old. Uh -uh. No way. Next Sunday, if I live till Sunday, next Sunday I'll be 82 years old. Thank God for every year that He's yes. given me. He's yes. so good. Yes. I couldn't live without the Lord and I wouldn't want to. Amen. And I'm not much of a piano player, so nice. bear with me.
going to have to worry anymore. Praise the Lord. Okay, Sister Jackson wants to sing one by herself this morning. Amen. Give her a hand this morning. Amen. 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 Try and sing from the depths of my heart. It hasn't been a bed of roses since I started on my way. Lord, you know I'm not complaining. There's just something I should say. For I've reached desperation. And I've stumbled since my start. And I've grown weary through the years. Now I'm crying bitter tears. From the depths of my heart From the depths of my heart Lord, I'm calling out to you For I need you here to lead me I've done all that I can do Tracy, a big hand. Amen. I sure appreciate them. We're just home folk. We're not professionals or anything like that. Just trying to obey God. Lift him up the best we know how. Brother David, stand and testify this morning. Thank God that I'm here. Yeah. Thank God. 
Praise God for the blood. Amen. If it wasn't for the blood, would none of us be here. That's right. Amen. I just thank God He just put it on me years ago. That's right. I appreciate Him. I love Him. All Amen. Amen. It's good to have my beautiful wife in the back stepping in the door. Give her a big hand. That's the boss right there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's my queen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. So thankful for these girls this morning. Don't know what they're going to sing just yet. They might not even know yet, but we'll figure it out here in a minute. <laughs> sure do appreciate it.
Lift our hands. Now let's give the Lord a hand. Praise the Lord. I want to say at the end, I appreciate the uh, Jesus name group here with us this morning. And I'd like for you to just stand all up on your feet. Give them one great big hand. Let them know they're coming around. Everyone.